via telephone the owner of this prestigious uh, uh, establishment, Mr. Michael Hornby. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, gentlemen. And uh, I want to thank Johnny the Bod for his kind comments last week. Oh, what, what did uh, my he say? My number one fan, so thank you, John. You are welcome, my friend. You are a good <laughs> friend and an amazing legislator. I'm, I'm happy you're my legislator. Yeah, you, you got a lot of legislative love last week. Dale Lee even praised Mike Hornby as someone right, who Dale, works like, for I teachers. I was a little worried I was getting uh, endorsed by Dale Lee, but uh, Dale, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good guy. I've got to know him. So. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a good statement you just made. He's a good guy. I got to know him. Uh, few people engender more reaction than Dale does. Uh, Fred Albert is the president of the AFT, West Virginia. He's a bit more of an affable character. Dale's a bit more blunt. He's like a sledgehammer. You can tell he's a coach at some point. Yep. And uh, people who don't know Dale, who are uh, anti-union, oftentimes will get on me about putting Dale on the show or have an angry reaction to some of the things that Dale says. Dale's doing a job, man. He's, 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 and, and his job is know, to advocate for I, teachers. I totally agree with you there, Rob, because before I met Dale, we've had him on the show for years before I became a legislator, and sure. uh, I was the same way. I was like, this, this is crazy, this guy's blah, 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 blah. Um, then you get to know him. He's just doing his job, and um, he is a, he's a really good guy. Yeah, he's dropped into the studio on occasion when he's been in town after the show's over. We've sat down and chatted for half an hour. I, I enjoy his company, and, and I think we need to get back to that. I don't mean to this, break this down into a lecture for people, but I think we've gotten too comfortable with hating people we don't know. And, and he's the kind of guy that you could, even though we disagree on a number of issues, yep. he is always available for uh, a conversation, and he's willing to talk out an issue. And I, I really like that about him. Yeah, there's a there's a person behind the viewpoint. So well, that's and that is, I mean, that that's one of the problems I believe with the American political system at Correct. this point, with America in general is talk to people with different opinions. You learn from them. Anybody can sit and talk to everybody who agrees with you. I mean, that's that's really easy, but you don't learn anything that way. And it's we all need to be civil to each other, and you can disagree with somebody's point of view and, and still like them, still think they're a good person. And it's critical, critical not to take offense when somebody starts picking at your point of view or asking about your point of view to defend your point of view because that's how you – actually learn more about your point of view and you can also educate the other party. You right. Know, people Without get very... It's, important, it's people... important to realize he's put a lifetime into the education. You know, he was a teacher. He, he does what he does, but he has a vast uh, uh, amount of knowledge and experience too. I saw, I saw a Facebook thing. Somebody posted a couple days ago. They said, you know, I, I'm not defriending you because you disagree with me. I'm defriending you because because you disagree with me, and I, I now know what kind of person you are. And it's like, what are you talking about? Let's talk about this interim session, uh, Mike. I know at one point it looked like you folks were going to be uh, tasked with trying to come up with the math to do a, a, a state income tax cut of 8 or 9%. That is not happening in this particular interim session. So where are your uh, attentions uh, devoted now? So, uh, yeah, I, I didn't think we'd go into special session this this time. I just don't think the, the House, the Senate, and the governor's office had come to an agreement on what was going to happen and how that was going to happen. It may be called later, but I still don't have a, a warm and fuzzy feeling that that's going to happen this year. Um, and and it, you know, I sat in on finance uh, committee yesterday from the Secretary of uh, Commerce and Revenue, and they they were pushing that we have six hundred forty million dollars that could be appropriated and can be spent, um, but I didn't have a sense that uh, any of the legis legislators were, were willing to uh, jump on something this year. So, um, you know. We had our education committee uh, meeting, and, and that, that was great. There was some great numbers presented from the Third Grade Success Act, um, but there were also some other staggering um, numbers that I was pretty shocked with, too. Can you share that information with us? Yeah, I mean, the biggest takeaway for me, and, and I've got to look into this more because, you know, 
our summative uh, assessment results were presented that was you know, it's done by our actual BOE and at the local level and the results were, were shared um, 82 percent of our students in 11th grade are not proficient in math and that that was pretty shocking to me I know that you know that's based on the SAT and you know we test everybody um, you know we're very proud that we, we test over 95 percent of our, our students but I think that actually hurts us in because the feds require us to um, test over 95 percent maybe that's hurting our results I know a lot of other states do not test uh, all their kids um, kids that are going to college are tested um, and put in that but maybe we should be breaking out our results we have a lot of special needs we have a lot of kids that don't go to college and maybe those results need to be broken up and, and that's kind of one of the things I, I pulled out of the the uh, results that I saw. That's a good point. I see no reason in comparing states that don't test the same pool of people. Yeah, it, it, it and and when you look at the numbers and you you see eighty two percent are not proficient in math, it looks terrible. But I think there's a lot of other factors that you have to put into those um, results where you you have to go. Okay, well, you know, you realize the SAT is a college level. Um, assessment a normal child that you know maybe didn't pursue eligible you know, whatever those math results are wouldn't do well on an SAT was uh, score anyway and more, and more than that the SAT in particular is not just a math test there's there's a skill to taking an SAT there's yes the test itself is designed in a way that requires a skill and, and you can, if you took an SAT prep um, course because you wanted to go to college, you would do way, way better right. than if you just took the test. Well, here, the is, question I have in regards to proficiency, because those are staggering numbers in terms of being not proficient at math. When we when we mention that, are we saying that a, a, an 11th grader, for instance, should uh, know this about uh, Algebra 2, Geometry, Trigonometry, Calculus, are we saying that the average 11th grader can't add 27 and 61? I mean, there's, so I don't need calculus to balance my checkbook. I don't need calculus to understand if I've got enough money in my account to write a check or to electronically send money. But I, I, I do need to understand arithmetic. I, I do need to know yes. how to add, or subtract, it's divide, multiply. So which, which is yeah. it that we're measuring proficiency on? The, the proficiency is the, the, the latter that you said. It, it's it's the, the the algebra two, the trigonometry, geometry, all that kind of stuff. So, um, it, it it it's a little biased towards those that are really going off to college at the eleventh grade. I think the the other report that they brought up was the third grade sex act. Those results were very very um, positive. That's like good. The amount of kids that are having to have um, extra attention is, is going way down. Um, and, and we're seeing it, especially in the second grade uh, and first grade, because those are the two that, are, that obviously have the aid. So um, that was very encouraging. Do we know what the, you said proficient, and they're using the SAT. Do we know what the math score is, where the Mendoza line is? <laughs> and I say Mendoza line, Mario Mendoza, that, that's hitting 200 in baseball, for those of you who right. don't know. A third of the baseball players today are below the Mendoza yes. line. Yes. Yeah. So, so one of the uh, highlights of the, the meeting was uh, Senator Grady challenged the, uh, the committee, the joint committee of the House and Senate, to actually take the fourth grade assessment and the eighth grade assessment um, and, and do it publicly, and, and that was pretty funny. Um, you know, they, they, she said, you know, we don't have to share the results, but we can rank each other, and I thought that was a great idea that we should actually take that assessment and see how the uh, legislature does. You want that because you'll finish ahead of everybody, Mike. I know you. <laughs> That's right. You'll win. And then I started really doubting myself. <laughs> I'd say if, you, if you haven't done some of that stuff in 40 years or 30 years, you, good luck. I'd, I'd like to know what, this, what the SAT score is that they consider proficient in math. I just, I just pulled up with the SAT measures. It's, it's, I'm, so I'm reading this. Um, 
measures their fluency, the students, measures their fluency with understanding of and ability to apply the math concepts, skills, and practices that are most essential for readiness for entry-level post-secondary work. And that it breaks down to 35% algebra, 35% advanced math, which includes uh, quadratic, exponential, polynomial, rational, radical, and nonlinear equations, problem solving and data analysis, and geometry and trigonometry. So it, it is not man managing your checkbook. It's, yeah. it's a lot more than that. But it's, yeah. it's yeah. a lot of stuff that they've been taught through math classes in school, whether or not they chose to participate, pay attention, learn. That was, I mean, that was up to them. But I mean, for the most part, as kids are going through and getting a diploma, they have these classes that teach all of these concepts. Jeff Haddix just posted one in three students from West Virginia have to take remedial classes in college, Mike. And I think the Third Grade Success Act is the long game in terms of reducing that, uh, that number. I agree. Right. I think it's great. I mean, let's, let's start from the bottom. And, and it's, I've always felt like with, with school, it is the building blocks. It's the first few years that give you the building blocks that teach you how to learn and teach you the joy of learning, and then you grow from there. What were the numbers for reading? So the uh, reading was, I think it was in 11th grade, from what I remember, was about 51%. I did send you guys the graphs. It, it's hard to talk about them without actually seeing them. Uh, but 11th grade, I think it was 51% um, was the uh, was the score on, on reading. Nice. Better. How do we compare to other, other states that are, are ranked similar to where we are? So... It's hard to compare to other states because we are one of the few states that, that do, we don't do it the same. So it's very hard to compare state by state. But if you look at South Carolina, we are we, we are still behind. But let's, uh, let's just be frank. It, it is We have a serious problem in the state with the, the amount of kids that are missing school and are missing more than 20 to 30 days. And it, it's, you know, when you look down in the south, it, it's there's a major problem with the amount of children missing school and poverty and, and the drug the drug problem in the state. So that is skewed because you know if kids are not going to school, they're not going to test well. They're not going to do well, um, uh, and it's a societal problem did you see or were you a part of the report jeremiah samples gave yesterday mike to state lawmakers in regards to drug use in the state i i was not in health i was actually over over on the senate side doing a peia um a committee meeting um so I, I i did hear about it from other legislators but i didn't get the first-hand uh, scoop on that. So I can't really here's, speak on here's the Brad McElhaney article on Metro News. An estimated 208,000 people in the state used illicit drugs in the last month, according to a survey by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Overall, the age-adjusted drug use death in the United States quadrupled from 2002 to 2022. There were 107,941 drug overdose deaths, overdose deaths in 22. West Virginia had 1,335 known overdose deaths in 22. From 99 to 22, West Virginia's overdose deaths increased 1,680%. The overdose rate in West Virginia is 151% higher than the state that scored best in the country and 85.6% higher than the national average and 36% higher than the next worst state. So you talk about performing in a classroom. Uh, if the family is riddled with drugs, the kid's not going to do well in the classroom, and there's not much that a legislator can do about that if this is the situation in the home. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's staggering. And in, uh, in the EP, you know, we we have issues we talk about discipline we talk about these kind of things but um it's so much worse um in other parts of the state that, that it's just ridiculous Seventeen thousand babies are born each year on average in west virginia of those seventeen thousand two thousand five hundred 
every year are exposed to drugs in the womb. Oh, my gosh. That is, that's one of the worst statistics I've ever heard in my life. I did not realize it was anywhere near that high a percentage. It's and unsustainable. I, you rot, the, the culture rots from within. And, and it's hard to change that from Charleston. Uh, you know, that, that's something we haven't figured out yet. It's the breakdown of the American family. There are so many factors. It's the, the allowing so many drugs into our country. It's, I mean, there are so many factors. Yeah, there's no way that you, can, that you can solve that in Charleston. I mean, this third grade thing, I think, is one of the best things that's come through in so long. You know, try to reach the kids young. Try to, try to get to them. Try to teach them young. And, and there'll be growing pains with that. I know, we, you know, we're struggling to find AIDS and, and we're behind and, and, and the school system's trying to catch up. But I believe that piece of legislation is one of the proudest things I could have co-sponsored in, in, you know, if I left today. Without a doubt, man. What, I, what I've never understood, and, and I was talking to somebody who's in truancy the other day um, with, with one of the counties around here. I don't understand why kids don't go to school because you would think if the parents are sitting around and doing whatever they're doing that's not involving work or anything productive, you would think they'd want to get the kids out of the house for the day so they could relax at least. Well, a lot of times, Jonathan, you know, an older brother's looking after the baby or these yeah. kids are, are, are having to, you know, be adults way too early in, in their lives and, and um, it, it's not about, hey, I don't want to go to school. It's maybe I need to go do something to earn some money or maybe I need to do this uh, to, to help my siblings um, and, and to help my parents because obviously, you know, the kids don't know any different. They, they love their parents, they're, they're who they are, and they feel like they have to do something to help. So, um, it, it, it's it's a tough problem to solve, folks. Well, they see it as they see it as normalcy. That's the life yeah. they know. That's the life they have. Yeah. They don't they don't know that that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, I the state needs to set itself up for little successes. I think, and it goes back yeah. to a point I wanted to make a, a couple minutes ago when we were talking about comparing our scores to other state scores, which I think is a fundamentally flawed logic to begin with because we're not another state. We are, in fact, our own. Yep. And I, if we can set goals, what, however we're going to measure them, don't want to do the SAT, stop doing the SAT, do something else. I don't know what they are. I don't, that's, that's, that's not my, my area. But if we set up that for next year um, or the next five years from now, whatever is the goal, we're going to achieve this score. And then we set we set the goal as an achievable goal and then we get there. And now we have a positive data point. We kind of move in that direction. I do think this is all everything we've talked about down to the the addiction is fundamentally tied to education and education is tied to getting kids interest and kids interest is tied to the ability to sit in a classroom unmolested by miscreant kids who don't to, don't want to be there which gets to the discipline problem so it is all one great big knot if we can solve the issue with the schools i think we we accidentally solve a lot of the other problems that that we're dealing with within the state Mike, I got this from uh, Delegate Paul Espinosa, who at one time was the education chair in the House. West Virginia and other states also administer the NAEP, the National Assessment of Educational Progress, that is regarded as perhaps the best measure of student progress. While it's easy to criticize the SAT as a summative assessment, our NAEP scores also lag behind the rest of the country, emphasizing the point that education in West Virginia needs to be better. Well, and I know a few and years ago when my kids were in school, um, West Virginia had its own test that they took every two years, which was, you know, designed for us by us. I can't remember what they called it, but then they, they got rid of that and switched to the SAT. Has there been talk of West Virginia school, the school system going back to its own, you know, state test? Well, I think, I think we, we what we're doing now is I've got to give credit to superintendent black, the, the systems they're putting in place to help teachers and to help students, and it's all been put in place pretty recently, so the results haven't like come immediately, but we're starting to see improvements in, in, in most areas. 
in the programs that they're they're running through the uh, Department of Education are starting to work. She did a presentation, um, and you know, she, I I'm a fan of her. She she is trying. She tries to she you know she she's doing those things. So I think you're seeing that, and I think w we will start to see the results in the next few years. Uh, from what I've seen, I think the teachers in West Virginia care. I think it's not so much our education system that's broken. I think it's the breakdown of the family. It's the drug use. It's the, the percentage that, that Rob said with 2,500 out of 17,000 babies born have exposure to drugs. I mean, that's the problem. I mean, if, if you can't get kids there and you can't get kids there who've had a night of sleep, it doesn't matter how great a teacher you are, how much you care, you're not going to, it's, it's not going to be successful. And that's not, it can't be legislated away, unfortunately. I, mean, I love the third grade program. I think that's going to help immensely. But we just, we have, a, we have a breakdown of the American family and a lot of problems. And I also want to say that we can tell which, which one of the people in here is the uh, New York Times best-selling author because he said to the kids who, you know, kids in the classroom not, not molested by miscreants. <laughs> Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's a wordsmith. He is, uh, without a doubt, a no, that, that is. I, I haven't heard that word in a while. It's one of my favorite words, miscreants. I was hoping you weren't going to say molest. No. Hey, uh, Jackie Long from the Board of Education, the president, said truancy is so bad that the Berkeley County Schools and the judicial system now have worked on establishing a truancy court. Mike, what can we do about truancy, and is there something the legislature needs to do about it? So I, I've talked to Hal Van Meter. He's our uh, Berkeley County uh, right. truancy guy. And, and I think, you know, Hal was talking about it, that you, you have to go to um, uh, circuit court to, to actually get the, the, the parents accountable for it. I think there might be something to letting it go to magistrate court because um, – you know, circuit court costs the, the the county money to do it, and it takes longer. Maybe we need to, because you know, if I was a parent and I got called in, whether it's circuit court, magistrate court, it doesn't matter. Getting called to court is, uh oh, I, I, we've got an issue, and it's holding those parents accountable. Maybe we we should be allowing the truancy officer to go to magistrate court to start with, which doesn't cost anything, and at least brings the attention to the problem for the parents, for the child, and for you know the county, maybe that's a direction we could go. And I, I've been talking to, as I said, Hal, and, and I've been talking to some of the lawyers down here on the education team. Um, maybe we should be allowing that to happen so that it can work faster because by the time they realize somebody's, uh, you know, grossly truant, it takes so long, and now you have to okay, it's going to cost the school board, um, and then do they have time to talk about truancy? So maybe we need to make it an easier system so that we can bring attention to the problem faster, and that's one of the things I'm looking into. Sixty seconds, Michael. Where else are you headed this morning? Um, I've got economic development uh, this afternoon, and then a uh, big thing tonight is uh, rulemaking review. We've got uh, 57 new rules and laws that we're uh, addressing, so wow. it'll be a long night for us. Coffee, baby, coffee. They're making you yeah. guys earn your money today. Well, you know, it's the it's probably the greatest uh, committee I'm on in rulemaking review. It's, it, it goes over every new law, how, how the agencies are. Uh, providing those rules, and, and you know that's where they jack their fees up, and you know we're tr just trying to stop that. So have a good day, sir. You too, sir. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Mike. Take care.